Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using consistent deformation method. In this beam, there are two spans, span AP and span BC. In the span AP, there is a point load 80 kN in the center. In the span BC, there is uniformly distributed load 60 kN per meter. It is acting for the whole span. Length of span AB is 6 meter and the moment of inertia is 1.5 i. Length of span BC is 4 meter and the moment of inertia is 2 i. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B, there is a hinged support. And in the point C, there is a roller support. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and movements are 4. In the point A, there is a movement MA and the vertical reaction RA. In the points B and C, there are vertical reactions RB and RC. The degree of static indeterminacy will be 4 minus 2. We will get 2. Let us release RB and RC. Here you can see that I have removed RB and RC. So the beam becomes a cantilever beam. Now let us draw the coordinates diagram. Let us keep RB as the first coordinate and let us keep RC as the second coordinate. To find RB and RC, we have to use these two equations. In the points B and C, there is no sinking or settlement of the supports. So delta 1 and delta 2 will be 0. RB is our first coordinate. So P1 will be RB. RC is our second coordinate. So P2 will be RC. Delta 1L and delta 2L are the displacement due to the loads. These four are the displacement due to unit loads. We have released only the vertical reactions. So these displacements will be the deflections. To find these deflections, we are going to use unit load method. In the unit load method, we have to make sections. In this beam, there are three different parts, AD, DB and BC. So we have to make three sections, one in AD, one in DB and one in BC. Here you can see that I have made three sections, one in BC, one in DB and one in AD. I have made all of the sections at a distance of X from C. Now let us make a table. First let us enter the members. There are three members CP, BD and DA. For all of the sections the origin is C. For CP the limit is 0 to 4. For BD it is 4 to 7. And for DA it is 7 to 10. Now let us enter the flexural rigidity. In CB the moment of inertia is 2i. So the flexural rigidity will be 2ei. For BD and DA the moment of inertia is 1.5i. So the flexural rigidity will be 1.5ei. Now let us find the moment M. We are going to find all of the movements from the point C. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. First, let us find the moment in CB. Up to the section, there is only uniformly distributed load 60 kN per meter. It is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that with the UDL, we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. So it will be minus 30 x square. Now let us find the moment in BD. Up to the section we have only uniformly distributed load. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. 
it is acting for a distance of 4 so we have to multiply with the 4 and then we have to open a bracket we have to divide the distance of 4 by 2 and then we have to add the remaining distance this distance is x minus 4 after simplifying we will get this let us apply that now let us find the moment m in da up to the section we have udl and the point load the udl is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative the distance is 4 then we have to open a bracket we have to divide the distance by 2 then we have to add the remaining distance this distance is x minus 4 the point load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it is also negative for this load this is the distance this distance is x minus 3 plus 4 so it will be x minus 7 after simplifying we will get this let us apply that now we are going to find the moment m1 we need to remove all of the loads from the beam and we have to apply unit load at B in the direction of RB. First we are applying here because RB is our first coordinate. Let us find M1 at CB. Up to the section there is no load so the movement will be 0. Let us find the movement at BD. Up to the section we have unit load it is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive for the distance we have to take this distance this distance is x minus 4 1 into x minus 4 it will be x minus 4 now let us find m1 in da up to the section we have only the unit load the unit load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive we have to take this distance this distance is x minus 4 1 into x minus 4 it will be x minus 4 now we are going to find the moment m2 now we have to apply unit load in the point c let us find the m2 about all of the sections the unit load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x 1 into x it will be x using this formula we can find delta 1l for cb m1 is 0 so no need to do the integration we can directly apply 0 for bd and da the flexural rigidity is 1.5 EI so in the formula instead of EI we have to apply 1.5 EI using the calculator we can do these integrations for delta 1L we will get this then using this formula we can find delta 2L for CB the moment of inertia is 2 EI so instead of EI we have to apply 2 EI for delta 2L we will get this now let us find delta 11 using this formula we will find delta 11 which is 48 upon EI using this formula we can find delta 12 and delta 21 for both of them we will get 96 upon EI using this formula we can find delta 22 for delta 22 we will get this in these two equations we have found all of the displacements we can apply them no need to apply EI because EI will be eliminated after simplifying we will get these two equations then using the calculator we can find P1 and P2 we know that P1 is RB for RB we will get 187 kN and P2 is RC for RC we will get 99 kN now let us take the real beam by applying this rule we can find RA let us take moment about C from A and find MA 
let us assume that MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 10. This point load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 7. Or B is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. The UDL is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that with the UDL we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. For MA we will get a positive value that means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction and it is a hogging movement. Now let us take movement about to B from A and to find the movement at B, MB. Let us assume that MB is a hogging movement. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. This load is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 3. About AB, MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. For MB, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MB is a hogging movement. Now we are going to draw the bending movement diagram by superposition method. First, we have to assume every span as a separate assembly supported beam. Then using these formulas, we can find the maximum bending movements and we can draw these two diagrams. Using the movements at A and at B, we can draw the end movement diagram. Since these two movements are hogging, the end movement diagram will be negative. Then by combining these two diagrams, we can draw the bending movement diagram by superposition method. Using the right hand side rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. In this point, the shear force becomes a zero. For the span BC, in this point, there will be maximum positive bending movement. In this point, we can make a section and find the distance. You can see that in that point, I have made a section at a distance of x from C. We know that in this section, the shear force is 0. Using that concept, we can find x. For x, we will get 1.65 meter. Using the left hand side rule, let us find the maximum positive bending movement. RC is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 1.65. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that with the UDL we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. This is the maximum positive bending moment at BC. The point C is a simply supported end. So the movement will be 0. Now let us find the movement at B. RC is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. With the UDL we have to multiply the distance and then the distance by 2. We will get to minus 84. To find the movement at A, we can use the right hand side rule. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Now let us find the movement at D. MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 3. Finally, we will get 54. This is the proper bending moment diagram. If we make this diagram upside down, that is called bending moment diagram on the tension side. In these three points, the bending moment becomes zero. 
these are the points of contraflexure we can make sections in these three points and to find the distances you can see that in those points i have made sections using right hand side rule we can find this distance for that we will get 1.41 to find this distance x again we can use right hand side rule using that we will get 4.17 then to find this distance x we can use the left hand side rule using that rule we will get 3.3 meter